Hello, my sweet peeps. How are you doing today? How are you doing today, Daddy? I'm doing wonderful. Thanks for asking. And um, we've had a busy day. Snow's finally melting a little bit, but I'm sure we'll get more. Uh, how are you doing today, Saw? Oh, I'm doing great. And I really appreciate to be one more day with you. Yes. And uh, you help us in examples and uh, your company it's always amazing thank, well, thank you, you. And i hope everybody else out there is doing great and uh and as excited to learn these phrases as i am to be here to teach you guys or to help teach you guys so saw so? yes that's amazing. Yes, then let's get started. We, we are starting with this master class with phrasal verbs. Yes, because uh, native speakers love using phrasal verbs. And I told that in the other classes and uh, who didn't have the other classes? I can say again, yes, that's so important to know. Then let's go ahead in this class. Yes, with phrasal verbs, starting with the first one. Could you read for us, Daddy? To bear on, to be connected or related to, to bear on. To bear, I don't know, to be connected, to bear on. I don't have much for that one. You go for it, Saul. Okay. Yes. So that is the first one, right? Yes. The number one, to bear on. This means to be connected to or related to. For example, I don't see how that information bears on this case. So I don't see how that information is connected to or related to this case. I don't see how it bears on this case. Now we can also mean to bear on, to mean influence or affect. For example, our relationship didn't bear on my decision. So maybe you have a personal relationship with a contractor and you interviewed many contractors yes and you chose the one you have a personal relationship with but you want people to know that personal relationship didn't impact or affect, it didn't bear on my decision. This is a more professional or formal phrasal verb. Yes, you will hear it a lot in the news, in reports, and you can use it a lot in a business context. Yes. And let's go ahead, Daddy. <clears throat> to care for something or someone. To like something. You can care for somebody as well as something or an animal. That would be something, right? Yeah, something. So I really care for that cake out there pretty good um 
I care for my dog because she's an adorable pup. Or you can say, I need to care for my dog because she's sick. Yes, you need to say something, darling. Yes, your dog is. Oh, yes. <laughs> or um, Asa needs to care for her mother because she is needing attention sometimes because she's older. Or she cares for her mother because she loves her. So yes. she is caring. There's a lot of uh, ways of putting this one to use. Um, I do care if you take my car because it's the only one I have. I do mind mm -hmm. is another way. I do care if you take it because you can ask, hey, do you care if I take your car? And I said, yes, I do care. Because I don't want you to crash it. Um, there's a lot of ways of you can use it. Yes. Um, but yeah, go ahead, Soth. That was a lot of examples, I'd say. Yes, that's amazing. Amazing examples. Yes. This number two, to care for something. When you care for something, not someone, something, it means that you like, you have a preference for that something, but be, uh, we commonly use this in the negative. So I could say, I don't care for chocolate cake. I don't care for chocolate cake. It is just another way of saying, I don't like chocolate cake. I don't have a preference for chocolate cake. I don't care for chocolate cake. And another way, it's another way uh, uh, that somebody offers you something, you could decline it and simply say, Oh, I don't care for chocolate cake. Or your, if your co-workers are discussing the latest uh, reality TV show and they want to, to know what you think about it, you could say, I don't care for a reality TV, if it's just to let the, them know that you really don't like it. If it's not your personal preference, that it, that is not your uh, personal preference, yes? So, I don't care for. And the next one, Daddy. To perk up, to feel better, happier or more energized um as in i would drink a cup of coffee in the morning to perk me up to get me going uh, there's one where your nipples are perking up because you're cold <laughs> but to perk up uh hey perk up it's a good day let's go outside wake up Get going. Here's a cup of coffee. Here's a cup of Joe. It'll perk you up. Yeah. So go ahead, Saw. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, this number three, super cup. Super cup means to feel better, happier, or more energized. So uh, think about the first thing in the morning when you wake up, you're still uh, pretty sleepy, right? And you, what you do, uh, uh, what a, a lot of people do, they drink coffee. So you could say, example, coffee perks me up. Coffee 
makes me more energized. Or going for a walk. And we all also use this when someone is not feeling well because they are sick or because something negative happened, like they lost their job and you might go over with some flowers, with some chocolate, or just with yourself to try to help perk up that other person, to help make them feel better, happier, more energized, right? Up. So you might say, well, an example, the flowers perked her up. The flowers perked her up. Uh, the flowers make uh, her feel better, happier, more energized. Yes, and now number four, Daddy. To sift through. To examine in large amounts of information to determine what's valuable or to sift through the dirt to find dinosaur bones or um, valuable stones. To sift through the toys because you're looking for a certain one. Um, let's sift through the pages because I left something in between them in this book of ours. Uh, let's sift through her intestines because I know she's got something going on right here and we got to really get to the bottom of it. So we got to sift through. So it's to sift through a lot of something because you are looking for one specific thing or something that is, that is what you're looking for, yeah. To sift through the sand. So go for it. Sa. Sa, 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 sa. Yes, this number four, so, as Daddy told you about to sift it through, this is a great phrase of verb. We use this with when you have a large amount of information, perhaps a lot of paperwork or files, books, and you need to examine that information to determine what's useful, what's important. For example, after Giuliano quit, I had to sift through all his files. So he has all these files, a lot of information, and you have to examine all of them to determine what you can delete and what's important and you need to keep or at home maybe you're going through your grandmother's photo albums and she has uh, 20 30 different photos albums so you might ask your brother example can you help me sift through these photo albums? So you're going to examine them to determine what pictures you want to keep and what pictures you want to get rid of. Maybe you don't know 
whose in that photo or the quality is really bad. Yes. So let's go to the next one, Daddy. Oh, we should add this one last. To wrap up. To wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. I got to go to the store. So let's wrap it up. <laughs> I got to take Saw to the uh, beauty parlor. So let's wrap it up. Um, or you can go, hey, I got a present. Will you go wrap it up? And like a Christmas gift or a present for a birthday, you can wrap it up. So it's two different meanings there. Something specific like a meeting, conference, or party. No, uh huh. But like wrapping up a gift or wrapping up something that you're doing. So yeah, let's wrap it up. I got things I gotta do. Yeah, so go ahead, Saw. Yes, that's great. Good example, Seth. And this this is the number five to wrap up. This is another way of saying to end, to finish. But it's very commonly used, especially in a business context. So if you're in a meeting and uh, you're coming to the end of the meeting, you could simply say an example. All right, everyone, let's wrap up. Yes, let's wrap up. Wrap up, yes. Let's wrap up for today. And we commonly have it. Let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up for today. It's getting late. Let's wrap it up. It's it is the meeting, the conference, the event, whatever you in that you want to finish or end. Or you could say, how should we? In the example, yes, here, how should we wrap up the conference? How should we finish or end the conference? You want to do it in a memorable way, right? How should we wrap up the conference? And then you can have a discussion on that. Yes, the next, Daddy. To flip through. To f I got to flip through the, the Bible real quick because I, I have a scripture I want to read for you. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, I got to flip through. I don't know. It's flip through pages, paper, books my flip through my files to find the taxes I did last year. I got to flip through. So this is to flip through, to quickly read a book report or magazine, etc. cetera, to quickly flip through something um, or just flip through to find a page. You don't have to read the whole book. <laughs> yeah. So to flip or to flip out. No, just kidding. To flip through. <laughs> Go ahead, Saul. Yes, I know there are so many phrasal verbs, eh? Yes. Okay, good. That is the number six. To flip through. When you flip through a book, a report, a magazine, it means you go through it really quickly. So usually because you want to get a general idea of what that book book is about, or because you're looking for 
very specific information. So if you have this report that is 130 pages, but you looking are looking for a very specific uh, piece of information, you can just quickly flip it through it to find that specific part of the report. Or you can do this when you're waiting for a friend to arrive, waiting for a bus, you might flip through a magazine. Just look through it, but you're not really reading anything. You're just flipping through it. Going through it quickly. Next, Daddy. To draw out. I want to draw out this mosquito bite venom. Or to draw out the bad guys out of the woods. To draw out your lies. <laughs> To make something last longer than necessary or needed, to draw it out, to, yeah, let's draw this out to waste time. We can keep going, Saw, we can draw this out a little longer, can't we? Yeah, to draw out or to get someone to, or something out of something, like bad guys out of the woods or venom out of your skin or a uh, a sliver out of you to draw it out yes so there's two 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 uh meanings for that so go ahead saw yes so th that is uh the number seven already to draw out. When you draw something out, you make it a lot, uh, a lot longer than necessary or needed. So, is usually used in a more negative context. Yes, for example. He really drew out his speech. So he made this speech a lot longer than it needed to be, or that it should be so. It's more often negative. It's criticizing the speech. Yes. Do, or you could say they really drew out the ending of the movie so maybe you were enjoying the movie but then the end was just really long longer than it needed to be and you're wondering when is this movie going to end they really really drew out the end of the movie yes so the next daddy to fan was that one I can't see it hold on uh to fall behind sorry i couldn't see that mm -hmm. to fall behind to mm -hmm. make less progress than one wanted or needed or i am falling behind in school because um uh, I'm not keeping up or I'm not understanding my teacher as well as I should. I'm, I fell behind um, when we were jogging yesterday. So Saw was way ahead of me because I fell behind. Um, or yeah. I, um, I pushed something off my dresser and it fell behind it another term for that 
So when you drop something in, it falls behind the refrigerator or the couch or your dresser or your bed that's calm, that's fall behind or fell behind. But you can also fall behind in schoolwork or in at at work or even at house chores. I fell behind in my house chores. So go ahead, Saul. No good, yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Yes, this number eight to fall behind. This is a great phrasal verb for both a professional context and a personal context. When you fall behind, it means you make less progress than wanted or needed. Let's say you were off, off sick from work for over a week. Well, you're definitely going to uh, fall behind. You're going to make less progress than needed because you have a deadline or then just you simply uh, didn't make it because you were gone for in t the entire week. So often we can fall behind because we are sick or there's a competing deadline or competing project or something going on in your personal life. But it could also simply be because we didn't work hard enough or fast enough and we fell behind. So in a school context, if you don't spend enough time reading or doing your homework, your exercises, example, you might fall behind. And if you fall behind, you might have to ask your professor for an extension on a specific assignment. Okay, and the next, that is the number nine. Mm, to get around. Ooh, that one could be a bad one too. To get around, um, to move from place to place within a specific location like a city or a person to person. Man, she sure gets around. Or I need to get around town today, so I need a ride, if you don't mind giving me a ride. Um, yeah. I need... I need to get around. I need to, or she, yeah, or she sure gets around. It gets around. So I don't have a lot for that one. Go ahead, Saul. Yes, that's good enough. Yeah. yeah. This number nine to get around. This is when you move from place to place within a specific location. So let's say the location is your city and I'm visiting your city. I could ask you, example, what's the best way to get around you in your city? What's the best method of transportation to go from place to place within your city, yeah? So what would you say? What's the best way to get around 
in your city. And then you can say, oh, Sabrina, you can easily get around on foot, which means you can walk from location to location because your city is very small. Or you might say an example, you definitely need a car to get around. Maybe your city is quite large and spaced out and it's not possible to lock. So you need a car to get around to go from place to place. So this is an extremely useful phrasal verb when you're a tourist because you should absolutely know how to get around in the city you're visiting yet. And the next daddy. To put off, to delay or postpone. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna put off going to the doctors today. I really don't feel like it. Uh, why do you keep putting me off? I really would like to go have dinner with you sometime, but you keep putting me off for some reason. Um, don't put it off. It can't wait. We need to get it done tomorrow. Okay. So that's good. That's a good one. Yeah. Put it off. Go ahead. Saw. Yes. Great. Yes. Finally, yes. This number 10 with good examples that daddy already gave to us so to put off when you put something off is when we delay or postpone it now you could put off a meeting you could delay or postpone a meeting for a specific reason you might say an example let's put off the meeting until next week right so let's delay the meeting until next week. A lot of times people put off things that are unpleasant, things they don't want to do. For example, I've been putting off asking my boss for a raise. I've been putting off asking my boss for a raise. So notice the general, general verb. I've been putting off asking. I've been putting uh, off cleaning my closet. <coughs> I've been putting off uh, dry new tires. So you need that general verb and why are you delaying it, postponing? Because it's uncomfortable, unpleasant, yes. And are you ready for your quiz? Here are the questions. Hit pause, take much time as you need. When, you, when you're ready, you can hit place, uh, play and and see our answers. Here are the answers, hit pause, and you can compare your answers to see how well you did. You are doing so awesome. Let's keep going, share your score, yes. And uh, let's go on. And you can subscribe. And as long as you guys are enjoying this, I hope you all are. So like, like our channel and subscribe, of course. And so I will keep teaching you as much as you need. 
Yes. Great. Don't forget, you guys, to comment and uh, and subscribe in our channel. Uh, we are uh, in the beginning, and but we want to have millions of followers, and uh, the importance is you guys. So be with us and see you in the next video. Thanks, Daddy, and have a enjoyable and enjoyable week there. Thank you, Saul, for having me again, and thanks for all for coming, and we'll see you tomorrow. See have you a good evening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you, guys. Kisses. Mm -hmm.